Hey, what's up everyone? Tedrick85 here, and today I'm continuing my Legend of Korra Book 3 vlog, and I'm going to be discussing Episode 6, Old Wounds. First of all, I really want to apologize for not updating this in a while, I just haven't had time to do this. But luckily, I do have the free time, and I uh, might as well pick up where I left off, and I'm going to be talking about uh, Episode 6, which, again, I said it was titled Open Wounds, I mean, Old Wounds, rather. Now, for this one, instead of giving a summary like I did the first five parts of this vlog, I'm really going to be discussing the main point of the episode, and that is the relationship between the Bay Fong sisters, Lin and Sue. With Sue Yin as, uh, as her, full, her full name is. In the last episode, we got to see how volatile their relationship is. Uh, Lin wanted nothing to do with either her or her daughter Opal, at the same time Sue welcomed her with open arms, despite what their past was. And, um, they haven't really said anything to each other for over 30 years and that, and we get a gl in this episode, we get to see flashbacks of that, and, uh, the way that, that came about was, uh, at the very beginning of the episode, we could see that Lynn was wondering what everybody was doing and that she was kind of ordering people around because that's what she's used to do as a chief of police of Republic City. And um, finally, she's convinced uh, that uh, she to get an acupuncture because of how much stress she was under. So she ends up going and getting the acupuncture and all of her inner thoughts start coming out. Uh, and the first uh, one that we see is that um, we find out that Su Yin is, d didn't really hang out with the proper group, so to speak, and that she hang she hung around with hoodlums and that, and much to Lin's uh, disgruntlement and that. And here, what uh, the thing is that uh, Lin wanted to be more like her mother, end up being like a police officer, more like a chief of police. Well. She wanted to be, she was more of, more like a rebel, if I want to say that. She was more of a liberating figure. She pretty much wanted to do what she wanted to do. And this ended up being a big conflict between the two sisters. And um, in another vision, uh, Lynn ends up chasing this car, which ends up being the hoodlums and her sister. Lynn um, scolds her sister for being uh, hang hanging around with them and being a part of the, their activities, while Sue makes her claim that uh, she was just simply driving the car and that, and her then end up getting into a fight where Lynn wants to apprehend her, and Sue pretty much walks away. Well, what ended up happening was Lynn then ends up uh, trying to restrain her with her uh, metal cables, and here Sue ends up cutting herself free, but in the process... Lynn ends up getting two big scratches on her face, which is where her scars ended up coming from. So that's a big part of her animosity, too. And another big thing is, which I'm really excited, I was really excited when I watched this video, was uh, we we finally get to see a flashback of Toph, which is the first uh, time we've seen Toph since book one, when uh, she was still calling Aang Twinkletoes, which I think was pretty cool. But um, here in this flashback, Toph is much more serious than that. She... She finds herself. She found herself in an impossible situation where she she's chief of police, but at the same time, she can't have one of her daughters being in prison. So what ended up happening was that she ends up being sending Sue to her grandparents while um, asking Lynn for the re police report, only for Toph to rip it up and uh, pretty much cover up the evidence, which uh, Lynn vocally disagreed with her mother on, but. Um, Toph felt that she had no other choice, and uh, to be honest with you, my heart, my heart goes out to Toph because of, of being put in that situation. Which I got to talk about too. Uh, I'm gonna be put, uh, here. I find out that uh, T uh, Lynn and Sue come from different fathers, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that fact because Toph really never put me in mind as the type of person that would sleep around or have different children. And, Different fathers and that, but don't get me don't get me wrong though. It's a, I don't think Toph any less of a character. As a matter of fact, I think Toph is just as awesome as she was in the Avatar. She's still my favorite Avatar character. So that fact does not diminish my character. But I just wish they would have handled that situation a little bit more. And uh, and another thing that bothers me too is that not only d is uh, Lin and Sue have different fathers, but they don't even know who their fathers are. So they pretty much grew up trying to. 
win their mother's approval, which both of them ended up being unsuccessful because Toph ended up going off to seek enlightenment. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm really comfortable with that. I'm not sure if I'm liking that bit of character development there, but, um, I have faith that somehow it'll end up working in that, so, um, that's just all I gotta hope for, but, um, once, uh, after the acupuncture, she, she ended up quitting the first time, this was after we saw the premonition of her getting her scars and that, and she ended up leaving, which ended up having adverse health effects, because Cora ended up approaching her about her scolding Opal, and, um, Cora asked if she was okay, and... This prompted Lynn to go back and finish up, and that's when she started having the visions of her, her sister, and Toph having a little discussion in Toph's office and that. And finally, after the succession, she pretty much attained inner peace for the most part. As we saw near the end of the episode, when Marco was trying to wake her up, and she actually had a very chippy, uh, not chippy, but a rather chipper disposition about her. She was definitely a lot more pleasant than what we're used to seeing her. And I also like the fact that because of this, that she was able to get Opal aside and apologize for for scolding at her for the last episode, and um, and which Opal said she understood in that that it was a very w awkward situation between her and her mother. So um, they end up reconciling in that, and Lynn actually persuades Opal to follow her hurt and end up going with the Cora and the gang to their Northern Air Temple to. Uh, be taught airbending because uh, Opal said herself that she wanted to go, but she didn't want to make her parents sad. So she ended up getting talking to her parents and that, in which at the end of the ep episode, Suyin, you could tell she was sad, but at the same time, she, she said that all she wanted for her child was to ma do what makes her feel happy and that. So. Um, which, going back to Opal, uh, there's an interesting thing with her and Bolin, because... Here, also in the episode, which I didn't uh, talk about yet, that uh, Su Yin offered Cora to teach her metal bending because she found out Cora doesn't know how. So, Cora ends up learning about uh, metal bending from Su, which Cora was able to successfully metal bend after the first try, and that much to uh, the uh, discomfort of uh, Bolin because he's always wanted to be an airbender. As a matter of fact, um, he was very bashful about asking because uh, you can tell he's, he even though he's comic relief, you know, he does have a bit of pride about him. And he probably figured asking him would make him feel weak or whatever, so he didn't uh, want to ask him. Finally, he met up with Opal one time. He was trying to uh, teach himself metal bending by watching Cora and Sue going at it. And, Opal catches him. At first he tries to deny it, and then he finally goes that, uh, he admitted that, uh, he was too scared to admit that he wanted to learn metal bending, and he ended up telling Opal that, uh, Toph was his bigger, biggest hero, and that's the whole reason why he wanted to learn metal bending, and then he admitted that he was scared. But by also doing that, he also told Opal that she was a little bit scared, too, because of her not wanting to leave her mother and father. And instead of to learn the airbending from the Northern Air Temple instead. So there was a nice little scene involving those two. But, um, but yeah, I'd have to say that this episode and the last episode were my two favorite thus far in this book. And possibly my two favorite books out of the entire, my two favorite episodes out of the entire series. Because I'm really starting to feel that this series is starting to really bring out its inner avatar, Last Bender, Airbender, and getting that strong storyline going, and all the strong side stories, and nice character development, even if I don't agree with all the character development, but, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really getting really excited about this series, and you, and you can tell that it's really starting to pick up momentum, which, I'm gonna end off this episode by talking about, uh, Nickelodeon's recent decision to remove the, the show from the schedule, which I still think is a crack of crap decision, because why would you can't why would you take a schedule uh, show off your schedule that was attracting more viewers? You know, I don't understand why they would do that to themselves and that. And the sad thing is, you know, without of course there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show that's very popular in that, but what else do they really have besides Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and a few SpongeBob reruns? You know, so. I would have thought they would have liked this diversity you know, to try to hang on to something uh, that resembled something they had before the Avatar The Last Airbender. 
and to have it just strictly digital now, I just don't like because, you know, there's circumstances where people just don't have access to where they're able to see this on the computer and that, and not everybody has a Roku or a, uh, an, an Amazon Fire and that, so, um, most of people do, do only have TV to watch this, so, uh, I think there's a very poor decision by Nickelodeon, and shame on them for treating, uh, Legend of Korra like this, and, um, hope, with some miracle, they'll come to the centers and bring the show back on TV, but, um, as for right now, we're stuck to just watching this on digital and that, which, Personally, I I have that luxury of being able to watch it on di digital, but it's not the same as actually watching it on TV. So, it, it's I'm a little bummed about that. So, um, but that's pretty much it. What I have to say, and um, in the next video, which should come up here relatively shortly, um, I'm gonna be talking about the original Airbenders, which is episode seven in that, which is another interesting episode. Personally, I don't think it's quite as good as these past two episodes, episodes five and six, but. It is its own thing, and like I said before, this show's starting to pick up momentum, which I really like, and that's, it's really starting to feel, I have that last airbender feel about it, which I absolutely love that show, so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, so, um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.